are so glad that you're here with us tonight. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful, just intimate time of fellowshipping with our family as we anticipate the birth of our Savior, which we celebrate happening this night 2,000 years ago. It was the night where it was the last night of separation. And that is such an incredible idea that it was the last night because the next day, our Savior was here on earth physically with us. What an amazing thing. So tonight what we're going to do is uh, we're going to sing some Christmas carols together. We're going to be doing an a cappella um, with everyone. And we're going to do some responsive readings. And we're going to have some little video clips. Um, we don't want you to have to stand during all of that. So what we'll probably do is just ask you to stand while we're singing. And then you can be seated. And, and if you can't stand while we're singing, that's okay. You can during that time too, whatever you're able to do. So that's how our service will go tonight. We're so glad that you're here. We just pray that you leave here just anticipating Christ more than ever. Listen, if I'd known then what I know now, there would have been room in my inn. Oh, hey, I would have given up my own bed. But I didn't know. How could I know, right? Now, Bethlehem was so full of people. I mean, the government, it, they, you know, made everybody in the world go back to the hometown and register. You know, government has to have the money. And since nobody wants to stay with their in-laws, I'm full. I remember that day. We, um... We were full before dinner time, and now it's two, three hours after dinner when they show up. Talk about desperate. He, he was exhausted and scared, and she, oh, she was about to burst. And as they're approaching my place, I'm thinking in my head, I know what I'll say to them. I'll say, I'm sorry, we don't have room. But by the time they get there, they just stand for a minute, gather their thoughts. He looks down, he's thinking. I notice she winces ever so slightly in pain. And he looks at me and he says, please. That's all he said, please. Let me tell you a story. I'm five years old, right? I'm helping my mother set the table. I noticed that she has one too many plates, so I say to her, Ma, you got one too many plates, you know? And she says back to me, you never know who may show up. 
I look at her like, what? She walks over to me. She says, you never know who God may bring your way. You always make room. So I look back at the couple and I say to them, I don't know where we'll put you, but we'll make room for you. And we did. It wasn't the nicest room, but it's all I had to give them. Mom was right. You always make room. like any other night except for that angel 
Ain't seen nothing like it before or since. Us shepherds, we don't get a lot of excitement out there in the pasture. But that angel, it was so bright, so beautiful. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Sam, you've been out in that pasture just a little bit too long. And you'd be correct. But that all changed when that angel came right up to us. And the angel said, don't be afraid. <laughs> I was like, too late. <laughs> and then the angel said, no, I wrote it down. I need to get this right. Hold on. Um, okay. The angel said, um, milk, bread, no, that's my grocery list. Th then the angel said, I have good news of a great joy that shall be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And then the angel said, he's lying in a manger, wrapped in cloth, go find him. Okie dokie. So we're all sitting around, and then one of the shepherds, the thing was Steve, he's like, hey, what are we doing? Let's get out of here, let's go to Bethlehem. So we hightailed it out of there, <laughs> and we found that beautiful baby. I'll tell you, I was a different man after that. God chose me. And nobody's ever chosen me for anything. I'll never forget what that angel said, though. The angel said, I bring good news to all people. That means you too. As long as I can remember, we'd been waiting for the Messiah to come for us. My family, our tribe, our whole nation. I always knew that he'd come, but... <laughs> well, let's be honest, it's not like I'm from Jerusalem or someplace special. I'm just a girl from Nazareth. And everybody knows that not much good comes from Nazareth. Never has. Angel had come to the wrong house with his announcement. But if that's what God wanted, well, who was I to tell him he was wrong? And Joseph, well, God bless that wonderful man. 
He could have joined in with everybody else. He could have had me sent away. He could have even had me killed. But he just never broke the promise to marry me. And so when he had to go to Bethlehem for the census, I was honored to ride by his side. Even with heartburn and bloated cankles and nine months of pregnancy behind me. <laughs> you know those women who try different things to induce labor, like going on frequent walks or eating spicy foods? What they should do is go on a bumpy 70-mile trip to Bethlehem not long after I got there, and I'd never done this myself, but even I know it was time. And with every wave of pain, I tried to ignore the fact that my family wouldn't be there to help me, and that I'd be bringing this baby into the world without the familiarity of home. But when Jesus finally came, I forgot all of that, though. I just wrapped him in cloths and tried to make the most comfortable bed I could for him with the only thing I had, which was an animal's feeding trough. Joseph said I should have been sleeping then, but I couldn't stop staring at him. Angel had told me about. My heart was so full, I couldn't even find words big enough to express it. I know I'm not the first young mother to bring a child into this world. It's always been that way. But as I look down at my son, my Redeemer. I knew that he would change everything because he'd already changed me. It was the scariest, um, most difficult, confusing, exciting, <laughs> most wonderful day of my life. I mean, <laughs> I mean, when you, when you realize that God is allowing you to be a father, I, I don't, I don't know what to compare that to, you know. And then, on top of that, when you, when, when it seems that he's deemed you fit to be the stepfather to his son, that's, uh, that's overwhelming. Um, he's, uh, he's perfectly healthy, happy baby boy that um, came into the world, I guess, just like most every other kid, you know. Um, I, I get why they call it labor. <laughs> I, I mean, since I was 12, I've worked every day of my life, but I, I've never worked as hard as Mary worked that night. She was, she was amazing. And, and not just that night, I mean, through all of it, through, through the months of people talking about us behind our back and um, the week-long journey to Bethlehem. And then... And then we get there, and she, she, she takes an ordinary feeding trough and, uh, and turns it into a cradle. And none of it seemed to phase her. She's amazing. And you know what, through, through all of it, I never heard her once ask why. Why? You know, she just... She just did everything God asked her to do. And if she didn't understand why things happened, she knew God was in control. 
She just, she, she, she followed his will. I, I get, I get it. Man, I get why God chose her. I really do. What I don't understand is why he chose me. Tonight we'll be reading from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, as we celebrate this candlelight service in eager anticipation of Jesus Christ's birth. This is the evening when God's love was poured out upon mankind. For those of us that have put our faith in Him, we know that love personally, and it's radically transformed us, it's filled our hearts it's given us new lives. It's given us peace, hope, joy, and love. On this night, God's promise became a reality. The reality in the incarnate Christ, God's perfect sacrifice for mankind, the life of all mankind. You know, as a kid, I would walk my dog every night out in the, the dark night, but we had street lights for the most part, and so it wasn't all that scary. But there was one night when I decided to walk my dog up the trail between the houses to the next neighborhood. There wasn't really a lot of light on the trail. It was just a, a faint light from the houses, from the back of the houses. And as I, I was walking along there, I walked past the familiar woods that I always played in as a child, and, and I was with my my trusty, super brave dog, so I guess I was a little braver than usual. And I looked into those dark woods, and I thought, I wonder what it would be like in the woods at night. You know, and because I was with my dog, I was a little braver, and so we stepped maybe 10 to 15 feet into that darkness. And I, and I stood there for a moment, and I tried to get my eyes to adjust. I thought, you know, in a moment, I'm going to be able to see a little bit. I'm going to be able to make out some of the familiar. Uh, I'll be able to find my footing, and I'll be able to, to know which way to go. And this is going to be a really cool and neat experience. Well, it was anything but that. My footing felt rather unsure. I couldn't see anything. It was absolutely pitch black. The vines and the foliage and the trees, it, it just covered every bit of light. There was absolutely nothing that I could see. And I just, I couldn't imagine going in any further. The woods, which were during light of day, very warm and friendly and, and, and familiar, they were dark and eerie and unwelcoming and seemed dangerous. I suddenly also realized how vulnerable I was in that darkness. I felt very vulnerable. I just remember that feeling. I felt like something was watching me and lurking in that darkness. As I stood there, I felt this sort of chill run up my spine, and I'm sure you've all had one of those type of feelings. And me and my dog, we quickly ran out of the woods. I'm sure I ran a little quicker than my dog because he was fearless. I, on the other hand, I recognized that dark was not where I belonged. And I never realized until that moment how much I depended on the light. Now, Jesus brought light into the world. Clarity and revelation to a world that was previously lost in darkness, wandering, not knowing which way to go. And he revealed God's love truly revealed God's love for us, bringing mercy and grace rather than the justice and condemnation that we truly deserve. God became flesh to rescue us because we could not rescue ourselves. The wages of sin is death, but instead of 
having fear and anxiety and worry and guilt move us. <coughs> we have confident assurance in Christ. Freedom, peace, hope, joy, and love. A lot different. The Apostle John, he speaks, he speaks of Jesus as the Word of God that brought light and life to all who will believe and put their faith in him. Jesus is the light of the world. And we as believers, we need to carry that light in to illuminate the dark places in our culture, in our society, and throughout the world so that others may know him, that they too might see and know the light. Let's open our Bibles to John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shined in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, and he came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through, though the world made was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came uh, to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the, the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in the closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. There's so much in this. On Christmas morning, the Word became flesh as Jesus revealed himself as the light of all mankind, the true light, our Emmanuel. Let's talk about the light of mankind in verses 1 through 8. Verse 1 through 3 says clearly that the Word, Jesus, was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made, and without Him nothing was made that has been made. You know, the Apostle John, when he writes this, he starts, he starts the, the, the fourth of the fourfold gospel, not with with, with Jesus as he came on, on earth, it, he doesn't start there. He starts way back at the very beginning, the beginning when the universe, the earth, and everything in it was made. And we see that the word, Jesus Christ, he was there, not, not pre-existent, not like he was a created being, but eternally existent. Now, Jewish believers... They were familiar with rabbinical teachers, and they, they knew that when was said the word, 
that it was referring to God. And so that God and the word were synonymous. And John is saying that Jesus and God are one. The Trinity, the triune God of Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit worked in unison. They were the creator of all things. And, and, and God, our creator, he reached down. He did not have to do this, but he reached down and he grabbed the hand of mankind and he rescued us from the darkness. He brought light. He rescued man because he loved us. He wanted to save us from ourselves. God came as man, the man Jesus Christ, to redeem mankind from the penalty of sin that we introduced. Verse 4 says, In him was life, and that life was the light of mankind. The light shined in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The prince of this world has declared war on the ones that are made in God's image. In the image of God, a war of corruption, perversion, and enticement. And we see this in our culture every single day, as it has been ever since it was introduced. And these things are, they are designed to draw mankind away from God, for us not to see and for us not to hear and not to embrace him. But God made a promise to mankind that he would send the light of all mankind, Jesus Christ. And let me tell you that uh, where there is light, no matter where you shine that light, in any room, that dark corner, every inch of that room is going to light up just from a single source. It only takes one light to change it from total pitch black darkness, that eeriness, that darkness, that evil that is felt, that unsureness, that lost feeling, to easily show you the way. On Christmas, a long-awaited spark, uh, a hope was ignited in the birth of a child that erupted in a, a bright and glorious flame that's Jesus Christ. And the birth of a new star signified the appointed time and the way to the child. Men attempted to, ex to exterminate, to extinguish the flame on the cross. But in doing so, God's plans were fulfilled. In the words of the prophet Isaiah, Jesus was sacrificed to pay for the sins of mankind. His, his death, his burial, and his resurrection were, were they, they lit up the hearts of mankind. If you know Christ, you know the difference. For over 2,000 years, Christ has bring, been bringing the light into hearts where there's, there's death and there's sickness and there's war. There's still the light. It's never been extinguished. And we can find hope, regardless of our circumstance, if we put faith in him. So in verse 6 it says, so that through him all might believe. That is key. If you do not believe, you do not yet have that light, that hope. You do not have that relationship. It is so crucial. So let's talk about the true light, because there's so much, there's so much fear. Like, just like fake news in our world today, there is so much counterfeitism. Jesus is the true light. Scripture tells us that there will be many who will come and claim to be in his name, and they will bring this counterfeit that leads to death. God offered the life-saving blood of Christ to cover mankind's sins. But in verse uh, 10 and 11, it says, Many did not recognize or receive Christ. And so they searched for their own way through the darkness. There is no way that leads to safety there. Gods they created in their own image, with their own hands, and philosophies that they themselves invented and taught and embraced. And knowledge and wisdom that they thought they had, the wisdom of man, and they trusted in it. 
and they all perished. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. But we recognize our Savior and our Lord, and we follow the light of the world. In John 14, 6, Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. And so Jesus bridged that gap. He's, he bridged the gap of an unholy people and a holy God that separated us. There was no way to the Father except through him. Acts 4.12 says, Salvation is found in no one else. There is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we might be saved. In our culture, the way of all ways, it seems, that they're, they're always saying, let's, let's coexist, let's, let's, let's follow all ways. They're okay, just you know, let your neighbor believe this and believe that. I don't want my neighbor to perish. I want him to know the light. Verse 12 says, to all who receive him, to all who believe in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. All it takes is belief. To believe in him and put faith in him. And to live through him. To abide in him. So we, we who believe are co-heirs with Christ. We're, we're fully accepted as children of God. As the, the New Living Translation states in 2 uh, Corinthians 5.17, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and the new life has begun. And so we, we see, we see the, the light of mankind that, that comes in to light the way. And, and we see this, this the true light, our Emmanuel. So... As we look at verses 14 through 18, verse 14 says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the One and Only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And they will name Him Jesus. Jesus. His name means Lord. The Lord is salvation. The Lord is salvation. And this is speaking of Jesus's calling and his destiny, what he was born for. He was born to bring salvation, and they will call him Emmanuel because he is God with us, 100% God and 100% man, and he made his dwelling among us, and we serve a living God, a living God who's with us, who intimately knows our struggles as he's lived them out himself as a man. He knows our pain. He knows our temptation. He knows our failures. He's forgiving. Jesus is the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Out of God's abundant love for us, as verse 16 and 17 says, we received grace, for the law was given by Moses to make us aware of our problem. We have a serious problem, and you're not going to search for a solution unless you realize you do have one. And that's sin. We have this corruption that tends to move us away from being righteous and holy, to seek ourselves rather than our Creator. And we're fully deserving of God's judgment, condemnation. But instead of choosing judgment, He chose grace and truth. And they came through Jesus Christ. Because of God's love. And as Matthew 15, 4 says, you, Jesus, are the light of the world. Jesus is the Christmas gift of God, given in love, a light for all mankind. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace, as verse 18 says, who made God's heart known. He restored the relationship with mankind. He gives us new life in Him and the power to walk in freedom from sin. And He gives us the assurance of our eternal destination with Him. Jesus is the light of the world. He brings that freedom, peace, joy, and hope. He brings it to His creation. His simple creation.
creation because he loved us, men and women who were once bound in sin and guilt. Suddenly, a bright light shone, a light that offers the hope of salvation to all who will put their faith in him, who will humble themselves and confess their sins, believe and receive Christ as their Lord and Savior, putting their full faith in him alone. The light we are given is to be carried into the darkest parts of the world. It is our role. We are his hands and feet. He's given us the opportunity to serve him. And he's asked us to walk in his light so that we might reflect it. I pray. I pray that if you do not yet know Christ, tonight is the night you make that commitment. Mm. We are so eager to see his birth. Tomorrow morning we celebrate it, right? We celebrate a promise fulfilled. Christ is the beginning of that wonderful promise. And tonight could be the beginning of a whole new life. But if you are a believer already, and you're not walking in freedom, if you're letting hurt and pain and anxiety and worry rule your life, you're not walking yet in the power of the Holy Spirit that's already in you, it's time to come unchained. It's time to live in that light. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your Son, God, you loved us just as we are. Just as we were before we came to you and just as weak as we are now. Lord, tonight we come humbly before you and we thank you, Lord, for, for what you've done for us. You rescued us when we were completely unable to do anything for ourselves. And Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we accept your Son, Jesus Christ, as our Lord and Savior. And Lord, we ask that you guide us. And Lord, we ask that our hearts be receptive to your Holy Spirit, that we might walk in the light, that others, too, might see the way. We pray this in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Our ushers, uh, actually three ushers, if you could come forward. We have Hannah and Kayla, and I believe this is Bill. If you could come forward, and I'd, I'd like you to light uh, each of the, the uh, Advent candles, except for the Christ candle. We light that tomorrow morning. And then from these candles, I'm going to have all three of you begin to light each row. Now. The flame represents Christ when he light lit in all, all of our hearts. The peace, the hope, the joy, and the love. He's lit it in our hearts, but we need to pass it on to others. So as they come to the end of each row, you are to pass that light on to the next, and on to the next, until every heart is lit.
not allow that flame that Christ has placed in your heart to blow out. Amen. Spread it to others. May this be a symbol to remind you that you should share Christ's light this Christmas and every day. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Amen. Amen. Amen.